the lead. Sponsored by Hospital Discount Pharmacy, Lavish Boutique, Lavish Coffee, Jasper Veterinary Clinic, Jasper Bone and Joint, and Carl Cannon Chevrolet Buick GMC. Welcome everyone, this is Greg Tinker. I am your host for The Lead, and we have as our very special guest today, the new head coach. I don't know if I can call you a new head coach uh -huh. anymore, but David Reeves is with us today, and this will be his inaugural season at Jasper High School. Yes, coach Reeves, glad to have you on set. Thank you, glad to be here. Uh, I don't know if it's a special guest today, it's just, it's just me, but I'm sure happy to be here and thankful for the opportunity to come out and talk about our program and our kids. Well, we definitely consider you a special guest, and I think uh, once the interview's over, uh, folks will understand why that is. So you've been here a few months now, hired in yes, March, sir. if I remember correctly, yes, and so started on the job, and now you've been through uh, spring football. So tell me in these few short months what you've been able to pick up or learn and, and so I program. will. Yeah, and so, uh, man, love to talk about that. You know, we actually didn't do spring. We used the two-hour rule. Um, we didn't have an offense coordinator hired yet. Uh, still learning the coaches, still learning the players. And so we're going to take the extra week uh, in, in July. We're going to get started a week early for that. You know, um, and I'm going to be honest, you know, looking at it now, I won't be able to tell you until about mid-August. This could be our plan mm -hmm. at Jasper uh, just because – we do share so many athletes. Uh, you know, we do share a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll tell you, there's nothing worse uh, than taking one of the funnest, greatest games in the world and, and, a, and, and a kid or a coach is dead tired because they went straight from football, straight into basketball, straight into baseball or track, and then it ends, you say, by the way, come out here tomorrow and be at spring, spring ball. And so I think it's uh, helped our summer. Uh, I think it's helped. Uh, Coach-wise and player-wise, every, everybody's uh, stress level. And, and you know, what, what we're seeing now are, are guys that are hungry to be up there, you know, because we kind of backed off and just uh, the guys that we had used, that, used the two-hour rule and stuff. And, and then plus we get to start a week early, you know, and, and I'm a big practice guy, so I'm, I'm always excited about practice in the fall and the preparation that goes with that versus – you know, trying to squeeze 10 days in the spring where you don't have these guys or you don't have these coaches. So uh, we'll see. We're always evaluating. We're always going to try and do what's best for our players and, and our coaches. But right now, um, that's got a good possibility of maybe being our model. It's gone good so far. Summer's been good. Uh, and we're excited and looking forward to first day of practice, July 31st. So, so uh, with that then, do you have a good read on your numbers in terms of how, how many – yeah, you know, older guys, older guys, yes. You know, a lot of time you want to count on the on the on the ninth graders and be able to know exactly who it is. But you know, we kind of put those guys on a on a little bit longer leash, attendance wise in the summer. Uh, they don't have a vehicle, right? You know, some of them don't know, don't know the older guy that can get them there and back, right. and so uh, they're on a little bit longer leash. And then plus, uh, you know, the month of June really belongs to baseball and basketball mm -hmm. and wrestling. And so we just kind of take who we can take then. You've seen it. Um, all those sports kind of are, are winding winding up to an end right here. And so this week you're really kind of kind of starting to see uh, the number kind of kind kind of come around. But, you know, we're not as concerned about the number uh, as we are about, about the quality of young man we have and about the way we're going to put in work and uh, about who they are as, as people and players. And so uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a good, healthy number. I, I'm looking forward to grow, not because I think we need uh, more players to do this or need more to do that. You know, I just know our coaches and uh, I know our program and trust our process. And I know that the more young people that we have involved you know, the, the, the better we're going to set them up moving, moving down the road in life. I mean, it's just good. It's good for those uh, young players to be around our coaches. Uh, you know, I think our program is given a great um, opportunity to, to, to grow your ability to deal with adversity, uh, to grow a little bit of discipline, to understand a lot about self-accountability. 
And, and you know, I think those are things that, that might be missing a little bit in the world mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. so I want the number to grow just so we can have a direct impact on more players. Uh, as far as um, <clears throat> the success of the Jasper Vikings, I think we're in a great spot number-wise. Mm -hmm. So we're excited. So without the spring, no doubt you've looked at a lot of film. Yes. And uh, you evaluated that. Yes. You, you know, you've you've been in this long enough to be right. a good evaluator right. of talent and of right. and of kind of where you think we are. Right. So looking at that and considering the offenses and the defenses that we played last year, right. our style of play. Right. Do you anticipate any kind of major changes in in the approach? Uh, defensively or offensively? You know, so that's really a um, that's really a statement that that you know I, I'm kind of old school. I, it, it's not about the play call; it's about how you execute execute the play call. It's mm -hmm. not about um, yeah, we're going to have some changes on defense just because I feel comfortable with them, and and we're going to have some changes on offense just because that's what I wanted to be who I wanted to be on offense, and that's no knock at who we were defensively or offensively in the past. Um, I can't help if I don't have a great knowledge of what we're doing on defense. I can't help if, if we don't if I don't have a great knowledge of what we're doing on offense. And, and so um, I wanted to be something that I was familiar with uh, that gives our kids, the kids we have now, a chance, uh, a chance to be successful. Uh, I'm really not a, a round peg in a, in a square, you know, in a square hole type of guy. Mm -hmm. I'm more the guy, this is what our guys are good at this year. We're going to lean more towards this part of our defensive package. This is what our guys can execute offensively. We're going to lean more to this part of our package. And so um, it's all in there offensively. It's all in there defensively. Uh, we've got uh, some great assistant coaches and two fantastic coordinators. And, and some and some really good players, you know, and, and we've we've also got some kids that have to uh, continue to grow and to con and continue to mature uh, for us to compete at the level that I want to compete at. But um, so there might be some changes, but but you know, uh, they're not they're not because what we were doing was bad or what we were doing was wrong or what we were doing was here. It's just that's just who I am. Sure. You know, and that's, that's you know, I, I'll tell you this, we're going to play hard. We're going to play, uh, you know, um, we're going to try and run through people's souls when we hit them. You know, I, I mean, uh, that's the only way I know to do it. That's fun to me. And, and you know, when the game quits quits being that, about, about uh, testing uh, kids' fortitude and, and about helping them grow that and helping them grow their, their strength and their confidence and all that, well, I'm just going to quit doing it. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy, but, but going through the process never is. And so uh, we're all excited about the challenge players are, coaches are, uh, looking forward to getting it going. So you mentioned coaching staff. Yes. Uh, pretty much intact from last year. Intact. Uh, every, everybody, uh, everybody that, that wanted uh, an opportunity to be a part of this journey, you know, they, they were more than welcome. Uh, you know, there's been a change. Uh, there, there's been a change here, a change there. I'd rather not talk about it. I, I like it for the coaches to, to come out and, and tell, but, but, you know, there's been a couple of changes just because guys, uh, you know, decided to go other directions other than coaching, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. Of course, we added a new offensive coordinator uh, we're really excited about. Uh, jockeyed some, some guys around from, from uh, you know, junior high, varsity, kind of moved some guys around and stuff that they felt like was better suited to them and where their life was right now. And so um, it's really good. Had a couple of, of, of great volunteers come up that are, that are uh, you know, former Jasper Vikings, and so we more than welcomed them back into the family because I know it just means more uh, to guys that have worn the black and gold in the past. And so uh, we like having those guys around. And so uh, nothing, nothing earth shattering. There, there are some changes, but you know, I'm going to kind of leave that for the uh, for the coaches to to put that out when when they get ready to put that out. 
You've had a lot of experience playing, coaching. That's and called being old. Called <laughs> I'm with you. Old. So I, <laughs> I, I understand. I feel that and understand that fully. Yes, so yes. I get that. Yes. But but because of that, you've had a lot of people across the years you've come in contact with. Right. And we can go all the way back to childhood, you know, yeah, that father, sure. grandfather, whomever. Sure. So some people of influence in your life that stand out, maybe something that they said or did that you observed, that you absorbed, and yeah. that's part of who you are now. You carry that with you. You know, I do. And, and, and boy, it's going to be hard right now uh, to come up with a, uh, a specific quote. I have been fortunate, man. I, let me tell you, I come from a great family, great family. And so <clears throat> to sit here and tell you that my grandparents and my parents were huge uh, influences on me and, and um, you know, teaching me a lot about uh, self-discipline and accountability and work ethic and, and all that stuff. But then there's been so many coaches uh, along the way, which is kind of what, what drew me into this, you know, way bigger than the X's and O's or even the wins and the losses. But, but you know, times I, you know, I call on now when I don't want to go because my head's hurting and I think back to this coach that said, no, you're going to go. You know, and, and, and all these different things. And so it's really, it's, it's hard to give credit. I've, I've been so blessed uh, with, a, with a great family and, and blessed being around, being coached by good coaches, uh, being on staffs as a young coach with great coaches. And, and they all pull me or shape me uh, in a little way. I, I'm, I'm fortunate that, that most of my experiences were uh, from, oh, that's really good. You know, that's really good. That's a good influence. That's good. This, that. And not as many. Man, I'm never going to do that. Mm -hmm. But there are some of those. Sure. And, you know, that, that shapes us all through, uh, through the good and bad. You know, I, uh, same with my parents. I wish I could have uh, done with one less whipping or something <laughs> when I was little because I got some good ones. But, but now, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for every one of them because oh, yeah. it made me who I am today. Sure. And, and it's the same with the good and the bad. Uh, through both the coaches that coach me and the ones I've been fortunate enough to work with. You know, if we sat here and talked about it, um, we would go really uh, more towards uh, the staff at UAB, and, and, and they were great, and the assistant coaches were great to be around, and obviously Coach Clark was great to be around. No better or no worse, but that's just been the last 11 sure. years of my life going back to Jacksonville State, and so those would be the ones that jumped in now. But, but they were good at every stop along the way. You know, uh, Joe Kynes had a big influence on me when I got to Alabama as a, as a you know, high school coach going to Alabama to coach corners as a grad assistant. Uh, man, what a, what a great influence that. And there's been guys in between and guys before, and we could sit here and talk about, about all that. But it's been, it's been very, I've been very blessed. It's been a blessed journey, and I'm thankful for all the people that, that I've been able to come in contact with. And, and if you're like most of us who've coached, different situations bring up different things sure. that maybe you hadn't even thought about for Absolutely. a long time, lessons you've learned or something you've heard, and all of a sudden there it comes from there the comes. subconscious, right, because of the circumstance or situation. Yeah, you know, there it comes, and I'll tell you, I, I, I see it now and all the growth because, you know, as a young coach, even, even as a young head coach, Way back in '97 was my first head coaching job in, in a little school in Tennessee, and and but as a young coach, man, I can't wait on the game, man. We game the game. I can't wait on the game. I can't wait on the game. And then you move into a coordinator role uh, in college or or a head coaching role uh, again here at Jackson Line, man. We ain't got enough time to practice. Right. We need one more practice. We need one more day. We need one more rep. You know, and 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 I just don't feel like we can ever get another work now. So when I look back on it. Um, I kind of smile. I kind of smile at that young guy back then that thought I had all the answers. Well, man, I'm going to be the greatest play caller ever. I've got, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then you look back and, and figure out what, what really uh, made it happen, and that's the kids and how hard they played uh, and their level of execution. And, and there's no magical call. There's there, you know, and, but as a young coach, you know, you do things and things happen and you're, and you're patting yourself on the back going, yeah, I got this. Sure. And it's a very humbling game and a very humbling career uh, when, when it comes back and says, no, you ain't got it. You really ain't got it yet. Here's really what it is. And, and, and I've learned a lot of those lessons. And, and you know, I try to coach. Uh, I try to coach now 
so you don't wait till week three and, and, and something bad happens and then you wake up and you go, man, I'm going to coach really hard. Well, I'm trying, as an old man now, I'm trying to coach like that now so I don't have to feel that way. Right. You know, uh, versus uh, all these years as, as a young coach, you think you're putting out, you think your players are giving, and then there's always something that, that hits you in a season that you raise your level. Well, that should have been the level that you were going at the whole time. And so uh, <clears throat> I try and do better in that now um, as, as an old coach. Uh, I try and do better at that and, and you know, try and educate uh, the, the young, both coaches and players alike to, to, man, it's so much easier just to coach as hard as you can on this side instead of waiting on something to hit you in the mouth. Because it's coming. Sure. It's coming. Uh, no matter what you do, there's adversity uh, that's waiting on us. Uh, in every practice, in every season, uh, in every game. And so uh, we just got a coach to get ready for it right now. So I, I think I uh, can sum that up maybe by being proactive rather than reactive. That, that's a great way. That's a great way. I don't know those big words. So I, just, <laughs> I, try, I try to stay away from I learned those from Al. <laughs> I learned those from Al. Well, I read his articles okay, and I learned yeah, that from there him. You go. That's, uh, uh, so so th this will kind of tie into that. Um, a real quick history of, of playing coaching, just right. run through that if you will. And then out of that, you've sort of already hinted at this though, but the philosophy that you've developed out of that as uh, a person and as a coach, and I think sure. you've hinted at that already, but sure. your quick history of, of your experience yeah. and then the philosophy that's tied to that. You know, so I was, you know, and this is one of the reasons I could sympathize with some of our guys at Jasper. I was a football, basketball, baseball, into summer baseball, right into summer football, and you're just going all, all the time. You're going, you're going, you're going. Um, you know, obviously, uh, football is my love. Football is my passion. Football, but but I, but yet I'm trapped in a, in a baseball player's body. So I uh, played a little bit of baseball in, in college. Uh, you know, thinking early on, I'm going to have to be a baseball coach, and then I kind of figured out okay, man, I can still do football. I'm just going to really, really, really have to work, uh, you know, to, to, clo to close the knowledge gap. You know, I was the guy in football that I knew everything we were doing on this side. I might not know what that guy's doing over there. And, and, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, I was fortunate. Uh, my first job in Augusta, Georgia, uh, so here we go kind of back on influences. I mean, I was fortunate to uh, move to Augusta, Georgia, the head coach uh, needed a roommate, and so I was a few years there, and it wound up being uh, like 10 years worth of, of, of golden experience. Because I mean, it's 10 o'clock at night, and I go, hey, why are we blocking this this way? You know, why are we making this coverage call at this? And so I was, I was able to be on clinic, you know, um, just 24 seven and on weekends, and man, what a great experience for a young coach that was just hungry to learn. And, and uh, that was a God thing and, and just putting it there in front of me, you know, uh, being able to step in that, um, you know, and, and, and then stayed in high school, uh, changed jobs and took my first coordinator job three years in. I was an offense coordinator back then, uh, believe it or not, uh, three years of that. And then took uh, my first head coaching job and was still kind of the, de facto offensive coordinator. And it wasn't until I came back to the state of Alabama at Bob Jones High School and then at Athens High School where I finally slid back over to, to, to my what I wanted to be, and that was a, de a defensive-minded guy. Uh, helped me, helped me a lot being on the offensive mm -hmm. side uh, early on. It, it helped me as a defensive coordinator. Um, like I said, I had an opportunity to go to Alabama as a graduate assistant. Um, you know, when Coach Shula, um, you know, was, was let go, uh, had the opportunity to stay on with Coach Saban two or three months. I, you know, I'm going to tell you a funny, funny story. I, I never really understood the business of the game. I, I was always, uh, we'd go up together, we'd go down together, we're in it together. And one day all the guys that had brought me to Alabama weren't there anymore. And it just, it never felt right to me uh, that I was that I was still there as a grad assistant. Um, 
So I took a, a D2 job uh, in Magnolia, Arkansas. I was a mule rider. Uh, I went out there with the intention for just a couple of years and five years later, uh, I was still there. had a great opportunity to come back to uh, UT Martin. Uh, it was a short stint because then uh, Coach Clark got the job at Jacksonville State. Uh, went with Coach Clark uh, for that year at Jacksonville State, and then I've been at UAB with Coach Clark ever since. So it's it's been fantastic. Got to see a lot of stuff. Got to meet a lot of people. Uh, got to learn a bunch of football and coach a bunch of football along the way. And so uh, really exciting. But but that's that's kind of the history in a nutshell. Boy, I tell you, I'm. I'm uh, so thankful for the opportunity to be uh, here at Jasper High School. I mean, what a tradition-rich uh, program in a community uh, that, that just loves Jasper High School and Jasper High School athletics in particular. So um, another, uh, another, uh, another God thing. I mean, I'm sitting around and, and I'm, am I going to take this college job out on the West Coast? Am I going to take this? Am I going to, uh, you know, step back into this job? You know, um, and I have uh, a grand a grandbaby on the way, my first grandbaby. And so um, this opportunity and, and for me to be able to stay here in the Southeast and, and be and be close to my grandchild and, and not have to be. 12 hours away or, or, or still living that lifestyle, you know, that, that, you know, I still go now from about 4.30 in the morning, but that's over about 6 mm -hmm. in the evening, you know, uh, versus if you're there trying to live that life like, and you're trying to do it right, man, it might be 4.30 to 8 or 9 even in the summer, mm -hmm. you know, and so it was a God thing, uh, you know, to, to not just find a job uh, here in the state of Alabama close, but, but to be at a place like Jasper that, that I've always had a lot of respect for through all the years. And have you found in that, um, as you just mentioned, at the college level, it's from can to can't and sometimes past can't, right? right? Right. So have you found in coming back maybe to high school football with coaches who have families and yeah. you know they live in the community yeah. to pull back a little bit on that even as a head yeah. coach and say, you know, we don't really have to be up here till 10 o'clock every no night. We can get things done. No and that way they can maintain a relationship with their wife and with their yeah. children and in the community. Yeah. Have That's, you noticed that about yourself? You know, I, I, I really have. Um, you know, through the years, it, it's always, uh, you know, work smarter, not longer. And, 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 you know, when we get it done, and, and that's what I told them all before they decided they wanted to stay or they wanted to leave. I said, you know what, when the work is done, you go. Mm -hmm. When when the work is done, you know, you go. I mean, I've had two young kids as a high school coach and, and uh, work my schedule, you know, come in at, at the crack of dawn Saturday and work till about the time they're getting up. And then if I needed to go back because it was a huge game when they went to bed, I, I might go back up there and work. Come in Sunday morning until it's time to get them ready for Sunday school, uh, you know, and then after church come back and work. And then, and then you feel like you can go home at a decent hour because I've done the work and, and you know, I understand and our staff understands, you know, there are gonna be days that are earlier days and then there might be a special week somewhere along the way where, where it's not early. And, and you know, we, we just all made the commitment to each other to work until the work is done. The big thing where you're able to do that is it's not we're working any less or, or, or um, not working as hard you don't have recruiting. Mm -hmm. and, and so if you stop and think even about the things that we're doing right now uh, at Jasper High School, well, if you went back and added three or four hours of recruiting on top of that every day, well, then it's still that terrible night. So we've got the opportunity right now to come in and work hard and get done what we need to done. Uh, and like you said, I, I feel like I'm able, I feel like I'm able to, to come in and say, hey, are y'all finished? Get out of here. Yeah. I got this. Hey, y'all go see your wife and kids. I got this. And so, uh, you know, and, and for me, you know, that, that, that's a really that's a really big deal for me to be able to do that now. But, you know, they're committed. The coaches are committed. The coaches are working hard. Uh, I couldn't be any more blessed uh, with, with, with the staff where they're eager to learn, eager to get better. 
uh, you know, and I'm eager to learn. You know, and I mean, once I stop learning, I'm gonna find something else to do. Sure. You know, and so uh, that is one of the things I learned through the years. Oh man, if there's work to do, we're gonna stay and do it. But if there's not, let's go home. Right. Let's enjoy family and that kind of thing. And so it's been really good. Well, there was a, a couple more questions. Yeah. And th this one just sort of came to me. So pardon me for 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 Snaking springing, for springing this one go. on you, but I think yeah. I think you'll appreciate it. Yeah. You know, as coaches, uh, I asked you earlier what you had learned from, you know, people of influence. But as a coach, has there ever been a time where you learned something from a player that you can think back on? And so you had an interaction or a player said something somewhere along the way and it sort of stopped you in your tracks. And you said, you know what, he's right. And and so from that point forward, you you maybe took a little different direction or thought differently about something. Can you think of an yeah, incident like that? Yeah, you know that? what, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share one instant, but but I just want to expand on that a little bit because I feel like I learn from the kids every day. Uh, you know, and it, it, it's almost like being a, uh, it's almost like, you know, for years I was a math teacher uh, and football coach, and, and it's almost, I related a, a lot to being a math teacher. If you set the foundation uh, really solid and you get that, then math is just easier. Mm -hmm. and, and if you never get a good foundation and it's taken me three times as long to work what should take me 15 seconds, then you hate math and it ain't no good and, and you're just, you kind of give up. And so the other thing about it though, which, which reminds me of football, when, when, you ha when you have a scenario if I'm an Algebra one teacher and I teach it every single year, but it's still different because every single year there's a different group of students. Right. And man, that really helped me as a football coach because you know, the, the meat and potatoes are still the meat and potatoes, but the approach for this group versus the approach for that group, it's always gotta be a little different. You know, you always, you always have to, uh, put on what, what's best for this group to learn. It's the same thing, just like in math. It's, it was the same thing every time, but there might have been a different approach. There might have been a, a, a little more of a weakness here and a strength here. Football teams are the same way. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's been, that's been really good for me. And so I, I am always learning from the players. I am always trying to get uh, an inside scoop on them. But one of the, one of the biggest things for me, uh, and learning from the players is, uh, you know, you never know what they're going home to. Sure. And, and, and so that's always been a huge thing to me is I, I want to get to know them on a personal level. You know, we, even this year, you know, without throwing any names out, I'm talking to a little kid and he's just running around wild as he can be over in school and can't do this and can't do that. And you spend 15 minutes talking uh, to, that, to that young man about what he's going through outside of here yeah. and it really brings things into perspective sure. and so whether it's the guys teaching me uh, a better way to coach them uh, uh, the guys letting me know what's really good for them or, or whether it's just knowing hey they've got a lot more going on than the two and a half hours we're spending on the field I, I feel like our staff is always learning from our players as we go absolutely so well, let's end on this question. So you're yes. here, you're getting to know the guys, you're getting to know the community. Yes. Let's say, what is your overall overarching goal for the team, for the community of Jasper? Because as you know, the head right. football coach in any town has a lot of influence. Right. So as you think about that, what, what, what do you walk into this kind of hoping to achieve? And I'm not talking about that in a selfish way, but no, you know, absolutely. as you look at things, you've got a group of young men yep. here in this town and the school, you know, we're, yeah. we're unique in that we have one high school. So, and so for our players, I, I want our players to be an example in the school. I think we owe that uh, to Jasper high school because they support us and they do this. And so to be examples uh, over there, both in the classroom and in the halls, uh, and I also want them to, you know, we're, we've got service projects coming up out in the community, just different things. I think it's very important that, that, that our guys give back to the community. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you, uh, to me, 
right down from the leadership uh, from Dr. Jackson and, and, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Allen and, and right over to the high school and, and, and Ms. Crump and, and uh, Coach, of course, Coach Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and now Coach Darwin is moving into that role. But, you know, the support that they give our guys, you, you know, we're going to try as hard as we can to put a product on the field that everybody can be proud of. You know, I, I feel like when you're in a place like Jasper, uh, with, with uh, tradition becomes great responsibility. Sure. You know, and so we talk about it all the time, the responsibility of our players to the people that set up in the stands and the people that came before them and really laid it out for them to step into something good. That's a big responsibility, and we're, gonna, we're always going to take that, uh, you know, we're always going to take that very serious. So, you know, we, we want to be those kind of examples in the school and the community and be something that uh, our administration and all the people, uh, fans and former players, can, can be proud of when they look out there and see Jasper. Well, Coach, we're glad you joined us today. Oh, thank and you. one of the things that you have to do is you yep. have to sign the lead poster. Man, on the I will wall. gladly, I will gladly sign that. Is is there any spot wherever you'd like to? Is there any spot? Well, look, I'm going to even it out. There's there's folks on both sides. I'll put it right in the middle. Let me do this too. There it goes. Go Vikes. Go Vikes. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah. We're incredibly excited for the season, Thank upcoming you. season, and glad that you're here. Right. And this is my second interview with you now. Yes, and sir. Coach, I'm, I just uh, have to tell you uh, in both of those, the balance that uh, I see and hear oh, of uh, football and life and the kinds of things that you're aiming towards, I believe is going to be exactly what we need in our program. Not that we didn't have that before, but sure. we want to continue that. Absolutely. Obviously, you talked about tradition, Absolutely. and so you're just going to carry that on. Well, and I'm you. thrilled as I can be that that's going to be the case. Wow. And we're looking forward to an exciting season of football and the growth of young men Absolutely. to be Absolutely. young men and then men who take responsibility in the community to be leaders in our community. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thanks. So this is Greg Tinker for the lead and coach David Reeves of Jasper High School saying a good day. The Lead, sponsored by Hospital Discount Pharmacy, Lavish Boutique, Lavish Coffee, Jasper Veterinary Clinic, Jasper Bone and Joint, and Carl Cannon Chevrolet Buick GMC.